All right, so if you've used Photoshop before, you're probably thinking to yourself, well, what about filters? Filters, ways of changing the, the pixels of the image to look different. Um, and lucky for us, filters are, some filters at least, are built right into P5.js. Now, again, if you take Creative Programming 2 with me, we will dig way deeper into filters while she make a bunch of our own by accessing pixels and doing some really cool stuff. Um, but for now, let's look at the pre-built ones in P5.js and see what's possible. Um, so instead of coding this with you, because it's a lot of just the stuff that we've already done before, um, let's just look at this example together. So I've uploaded uh, an image for you uh, that's a picture of a nice waterfall and um, loaded it in preload just like we would expect. I've resized it um, so that it fills the window. You can take a look at this code for yourself. Um, and it uses then create canvas to the size of the image rather than the other way around so that it ensures, um, you know, our canvas fits nicely, which is kind of cool. And then um, we just draw our image and then filter the results by running this filter command. There's a bunch of different filters in P5.js. Um, if we go to the reference, we can find filter here um, and you can scroll through and see a bunch of examples of these. So these include, um, you know, inverting color, posterization, dilation, blurring, and then a bunch of descriptions of these. But in this um, example here, I'm using an if statement so that we can specify at the top which filter we want to run. And then I've got some preset values for you on these here, as well as some explanations. So let's run this and see how this looks. So. Um, actually, that's going to fill. Let's make this a little bigger. That looks good. Okay. So if, for example, we specify blur, um, you know, obviously that makes a lot of sense. It's going to blur an image. Let's go through some of these examples. So the first is threshold. Threshold um, looks at the brightness of colors. And if it's above a certain threshold, it be uh, brighter than a certain threshold, it becomes white, the pixel becomes white, and if it's below it, it becomes black. So it converts this to a binary image. Um, this is used a lot in computer vision, but also might be cool. You also might be thinking a little bit here, oh, maybe I could use this to create a mask on another image, could be kind of cool. Um, then we have gray, this converts it to grayscale. That's pretty simple. Uh, invert flips the colors, so it inverts the color. Things that are light get dark, things that are dark they get light, and the color gets flipped on the color wheel. Um, oh, threshold, so some of these allow for a parameter to be specified, um, which you'll see down here. So for example, threshold, we can specify the cutoff point for light and dark. Grayscale, obviously it doesn't have anything, neither does invert, um, but blur does, so we can specify the amount of blurring. This is eight right here. Uh, and then we have two others that are actually really uh, helpful, not so much for our purposes, but I wanted to show you them, dilate and erode. So what dilate does is it increases the sort of size of light areas of the image. And this is really useful for computer vision for filling holes and smoothing edges. So if you're trying to, for example, track my hand on the screen, um, against the light color background. Um, this will help just sort of smooth out the edges and stuff like that. But it might be that this is interesting as you're kind of working. And then a road basically does the opposite. Here, we're not gonna see a huge difference. Um, and that's pretty much it. These filters are really easy. Um, what you then might wanna think about is using multiple filters and the order in which you draw them is gonna change. So if you, for example, blur and then um, do threshold, you're gonna get a really different result than if you do it in the opposite order. The other thing I'll say about this is just like in Photoshop, filters can look really great. Filters can look really cheesy and pre-made. So I would use them sparingly and carefully. Um, you don't want this just to look like kind of like filter art, um, but these are really helpful. And of course, uh, we'll see in the next example, a little bit, a little bit about how we can access pixel values and change them. Um, you can certainly build your own filters, um, which is really cool. That's out of the scope of what we're doing this week. Um, but if, if you're like cruising and you're really psyched, you can try doing that as well. And like I said, in Creative Programming 2, we dive way in and do this stuff. So that's filters, kind of helpful, kind of cool. Um, use them sparingly.